Hi, I'm Willie and welcome back to my channel. Thank you to everyone who is here, everyone who is, uh, is following me, everyone who subscribed, everyone who contacts me. Thank you to everyone. I think I'm going to shorten that up at the beginning of the videos and just say thank you to everyone. I think that's what we're going to do. Welcome back to another Security Saturday. We're going to, you know, they were uh, initially running about 30 minutes. I think we're going to try to cut these down a little bit so they're a little bit more enjoyable. So what I've got tonight is one, two, three, four, five stories. One of them I'm sure that you've heard of and you've heard all kinds of things, but I'll give you kind of how my experience went with it uh, when it happened on Thursday. And then uh, we'll talk about some software and things like that. So let's hop into it. So this story is very interesting, and I don't know if any of you use this software. I uh, used to uh, help people if they thought their significant other was um, cheating and using the computer. You know, we had certain ways. I never went as far um, to install a spy application. You know, we have other tools um, where we can go in and we can look at the history. And even though you think you've deleted your internet history, it's not really gone most of the time. Um, we can still find, you know, pieces of things on the system and put things together. Um, but what kind of happened with that is, you know, I'm from a small area, and so you get involved in that, and then people get divorces, and there's all kinds of issues. And so that's something that if I know you, I will likely not help you do that. So if I know you and you need that kind of help, I'm probably going to push you to someone else just because I don't want to get involved in that point. To me, the money is not not worth it. Uh, so this uh, story is very interesting to me. As, um, this is from Comparatech, and uh, it says almost half of people don't know it's illegal to install a spy app on their partner's phone. So they did this poll, and it was, do you think it is legal to install a program on a partner's phone to snoop on their activity? And... 53% said no, 18.28% said yes, 28.72% were kind of in the fog on that. So it's uh, the survey was of more than 2,000 people, so I mean it is a legitimate uh, survey. And you really need to think about this, you know, when you're doing it. Being in a relationship in the first place, there has to be some trust. If you don't have that trust, like my wife, I, I trust her with my life. Uh, I have to. So uh, if you can't trust your partner, I'm not going to give you relationship uh, advice, but if you can't trust your partner, yeah. All right. So it is, uh, you know, sometimes it is illegal to use these applications. Now, I uh, worked at a company where we had a program, and it was called Global Patrol. And it's supposed to give you trending, you know, the trends of what your employees are doing. And I only saw the software used to call people on the carpet and fire them. It was the only thing I ever saw that software used for. Uh, Global Patrol is still available out there. It takes a screenshot every X, you know, X amount of seconds, records every keystroke. So if an employee is logging into their bank, guess what? You've now recorded their bank credentials. Now, most antivirus programs will pick up Global Patrol, so you have to create exceptions. Um, and it should pick up Global Patrol. You know, there are other ways for companies to uh, manage what their employees are doing on the network and on the Internet. So, um, you uh, you know, in the UK, um, installing an app without the person's agreement is illegal under the Computer Misuse Act. So, I just, I thought this was, this was interesting. And I'm sure that in the United States, depending on what state you're in, the laws are different. So, um, and it goes in and it tells you like who installs what on whose phone. I mean, it's very interesting. So I'll link to this so you can take a look at that. This is one thing I will not help you with. I will not help you spy on your partner. End of story. I probably won't help you spy on it. On, uh, well, that's not true, but I will not help you spy on your partner. I mean, if, if, if you've got, you know, legitimate concerns in a business about things that are going on, we have ways to do it without this software, ways that uh, are not living in a gray area, things that are very documented. 
So we're going to move on. The next exploit is a WordPress exploit. And you know that I love WordPress. I love WordPress for the same reason that people love LastPass. You know, LastPass is out there. It's, it's getting vetted. It's used by millions of people. And when there's an exploit, they fix the problem. And that's the reason I love WordPress. I've run into three companies in the last year who say, ah, we won't do WordPress because there's, uh, there's security problems. That's awesome. So then there's a website where you can go look up what's in use on the internet. Well, WordPress uh, powers some 35% of the internet. And it has 60 to 70% market share of content management systems. So it is the behemoth, the Goliath, the big boy on the block. So, of course, it's just like um, just like Windows. You know, it's out there. It's going to have, you know, some vulnerabilities. But uh, I'm sure that this is going to get taken care of quickly. And it would take someone really special to pull this off. But basically, uh, this guy uh, found a way to send a, a uh, I think they used the word dirty in here somewhere um, oh yeah WordPress is used by more than two twenty seven point five percent of the top 10 million websites it is the most popular website management or blogging system in use on the web supporting more than 60 million websites so I'm gonna keep using it and you can take your security through obscurity do you remember when we talked about that that two people can keep a secret if one of them are dead just because you're using concrete 5 or some other uh, CMS doesn't mean that it's secure. It just means that it's only got 10,000 installations on the web and somebody hasn't found the problems yet. So, uh, but it uh, could be possible for someone who is um, very knowledgeable to craft a dirty link. I like the way that rolls off my tongue, a dirty link. And uh, reset a password and, and get them into the site. I haven't yet seen it uh, in the wild. It could be out there, not 100% sure if if anybody is taking care of the shit but if, uh, make sure you're running a web app firewall like WordFence and hopefully it will mitigate some of these things so yeah you can see the proof of concept is in here um, so we'll keep an eye on that but I'm still gonna keep using WordPress still gonna do it still gonna send it like I said because your CMS has 10,000 installs security through obscurity is not security all right, the next thing I want to talk about, because right now, you know, internet rights in America and, uh, you know, rights of uh, citizens all over the world is a very hot topic. Liberty uh, and freedom should be a hot topic for all of us. And uh, in India, they have this national database of uh, their citizens. And in the national database, they also have biometric information. I don't ever want to see that happen here in the States if we can avoid it. Now, if you're a felon and you've raped, murdered, uh, all that stuff, yes, get your swab, go in the database, that's fine. Uh, but for everyday citizens who are law-abiding, uh, we should not be in a database. And uh, especially, I don't want my biometric information in there, but this database, this uh, um federal uh, or ministry or what, however India's uh, federal government is set up. I'm, I'm not 100% familiar with the terms. Uh, about 135 million Indian citizens' information has been leaked. That's a huge problem, especially when there's biometric information. So I'm going to link to this so you can read through it, but uh, it's all over the, the web. 135 million citizens' information released. I mean, they're going to have to tighten the controls on this. And these are the things. There should not be a centralized database of the citizenry, especially with biometric information. We just, we get in, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. All right. The uh, next um, <laughs> blog link that we've got here is the um, De Department of Defense. Um, do you, I don't know if you know what the Predator drones are, but they're these drones where somebody is stationed in Nevada in the United States or some other remote location. They're flying these Predator drones in another part of the world, and they're doing military engagements, right? So uh, they left these things online. They were viewable. 
this guy uh, uh, captured them, and he talks about, um, you know, what he was able to do, and he's got some screenshots. He uh, Here's some footage that he captured on his cell phone, and so what you are seeing on this screen is from a Predator drone. This was online, publicly available. So he, uh, he caught this and uh, recorded it with his cell phone. All of the uh, video feeds have now been taken down, but this is very concerning that uh, we would have either uh, the DOD or a third-party contractor for them accidentally leaving uh, Predator drone vid feeds open on the Internet. I mean, I, I'm not even going to get into the politics of this. But just the fact that this happened, that is, that's concerning. So uh, I'll put a link to this in there so you can watch the video. Um, it's also interesting when you get on YouTube and you look at the military video that's been released. Um, you know, uh, the weapons that we use are very scary. And um, I, you know, I, it's... Sometimes it breaks my heart to watch some of the videos of some of the things that happened. If you've ever seen the pictures of when we dropped the bombs uh, in Japan, uh, the devastation that, that some of these weapons cause um, is crazy. But but this this is something else, and uh, check it out. I mean, you know there's millions of webcams out there that are open, I guess. Why not a webcam on a Predator drone, right? All right, so the story that you probably knew was coming and I'm going to talk about it just a little bit, was the Google OAuth uh, security problem. And uh, on, uh, I think it was yeah, last week, Thursday, Wednesday. Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday. Um, and it said, somebody has shared a file with you, and you clicked on it, and it took you, and basically we didn't know what was happening when it first started. So it started coming through. Uh, users started emailing saying, hey, this doesn't look right, you know, because my users are very good about um, when they get a message that they're not expecting, they scrutinize it. And I love them for that. So I started getting, you know, getting these in. We didn't know what it did, and there was no information available on it when it first started happening. But then my instant messenger lit up, and somebody's like, hey, are you guys seeing this? And I'm like, yeah, they're coming in. So I send out a mass email, you know, to the users, let them know what's going on. Then my instant messenger lights up again and again and again. And within an hour, apparently this thing had gone coast to coast and like a million people had, uh, had clicked that link and <laughs> it just spread like wildfire. So, um, but we were, we were discussing it and apparently Google who, is known about this problem, I guess, for five to six years. They stepped in and they remediated within an hour and everything is good. But at the beginning, we didn't know, okay, is this thing harvesting credentials? Is it dropping ransomware? You know, because you're clicking a link and things are, are happening. We had no idea until official reports started coming through because I'm certainly not going to click it on a live system. And at the, at the time where I was at, I did not have a sandbox up where I could do something like that, but it, it spread very quickly. I'm not going to go into the details. They're everywhere, but uh, it, the problem I think is fixed now. So I will put a link to this this PC world. This is just one of a thousand, you know, stories about it. Um, and that was on Wednesday. I should have <laughs> I should have looked right there, but I knew it was Wednesday or Thursday, and uh, it was Wednesday. So. The last thing I'm going to talk about, I did a video on Malwarebytes, but I want to talk about Malwarebytes again because they have the anti-ransomware built in. Now, I am now an affiliate. After I did the first video, they reached out and they asked me to become an affiliate. So I am an affiliate, and I'm going to put a link to this download. And this download is um, it's a it's an executable that has my affiliate information built into it and if you purchase I get a few bucks it'll help fund the channel so I'll put a link to uh, my Malwarebytes download and this is legit you can see the Malwarebytes uh, logo up there but this this one is uh, Willie Howe's affiliate download so if you like the program please uh, use my affiliate you know information to purchase that but 
I will tell you that what I'm finding. So, I mean, antivirus is such a weird thing. It's such an old way of, you know, traditional antivirus, uh, you know, is basically a checkbox on a compliance list now. Um, traditional antivirus is not, I don't know. I will tell you that I run Windows Defender and Malwarebytes, and I do all kinds of security testing and all kinds of um, checking of websites and things like that when I'm setting up content filtering and DNS filtering. Uh, and I have zero problems. Malware bytes will pop up and catch things. So there, I mean, it really, I can't say enough about malware bytes. And I know I'm going to get flack in the comments and people are like, blah, blah, what about this software? I'm going to tell you, bang for my buck, malware bytes, it doesn't get, it doesn't get any better. And I know some of you have had issues and I'm, I'm sorry, there's nothing that I can do about that. But I will tell you what, if you've had a problem like where you owned a version and then it upgraded, and then you lost your version, please let me know. I will send your information to the salesperson who set me up with this affiliate, and we'll see if we can get you taken care of. I will make that promise to you. If if you were one of those people that had that situation, either email me, go to h5technology.com, fill out the contact. Um, email or that contact form is probably going to get to me quicker than the comments on YouTube, uh, unless you're very early in the commenting. But, uh, you know, I, I had a guy, I think I told the story where I had to go over there like once a week who put malware bites on there. And I, I, you know, the dude was, he was surfing, whatever, you know, we're not going to talk about this guy's uh, proclivities, but, uh, malware bites, you know, there went my lunch money. So <laughs> way to go malware bites. So this week has been kind of a, kind of a, a flash and uh, I don't have any concept really that I want to talk about tonight. Uh, we are definitely going to do more of the technical videos this coming week. Uh, last week's technical videos were really good. We're going to continue on that and then we're going to get back into some of this VPN stuff. I've got some really special hardware. If you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, I posted a picture of the hardware uh, that I'm going to be deploying in a lab situation. And we're going to be talking about it here. So that's it for this Security Saturday. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please use all those affiliate links. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Click the little bell that's down there to get a you know, notification when I release a new video. Uh, please subscribe. Please comment and share. And we'll see you this week when I come back for configuration videos.